When early humans discovered fire, they didn't just light up the darkness. They took the first step in chemistry. Unknowingly, they unlocked the door to science while striking stones together, shaping metals, or trying to make medicine from plants. Over time, chemistry became central to our quest to understand the universe. But the journey didn't start with what we would call scientific studies today. Once upon a time, there were alchemists. We don't know what they were truly after. Gold, immortality, or the secrets of the universe? The foundation of what we now call chemistry were laid during those mysterious pursuits. So did the alchemists achieve their goals? Why did they vanish from the stage of history? How did the transition to scientific chemistry happen? How did the science of chemistry, which stretches from nuclear energy to the pans we use in our kitchens, evolve? What did humanity truly discover at the end of this journey spanning thousands of years? In this video, I will explain all of chemistry in just eight minutes and answer all these questions. Don't worry, I'll explain the boring chemistry we learned for years in school in a deeper, more fun, and very concise way. Let's go! Yes, once upon a time, there were alchemists. This was a mysterious era where the foundations of modern chemistry were laid. The chemistry we know today was shaped by alchemists who once sought the secret of life, the elixir of immortality, and the way to turn base metals into gold. This adventure began in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, in the pre-millennium era. The alchemists of that time were not only interested in practical applications like metalworking and dye production, but also tried to understand the nature of the universe and matter. Their goal was to unlock nature's deepest secrets. Alchemy's golden age coincided with the golden age of Islamic civilization. Scholars like Jabir ibn Hayyan transformed alchemy from simple magic into a scientific discipline. He classified various chemical substances and designed tools like the Alembic, which were the forerunners of modern laboratory equipment. His work led to the discovery of fundamental chemical processes such as distillation, sublimation, and crystallization. Later, as alchemy spread to Europe, it became both a mystical and scientific journey. Alchemists like Paracelsus focused on medicine, exploring the healing power of substances. But don't forget, their greatest dream was the Philosopher's Stone, which could turn all metals into gold. The end of alchemy came with the emergence of scientists like Robert Boyle and Antoine Lavoisier. Robert Boyle was one of the first to systemize experiments and use the scientific method. Lavoisier, on the other hand, revolutionized chemistry into a modern science by formulating the law of conservation of mass. From then on, trial and error and mysterious beliefs were replaced by controlled experiments and measurable data. And so, alchemy gradually gave way to modern chemistry. However, this transition was not an end, but a beginning. The real journey of chemistry began when it was freed from random trials and mystical beliefs, becoming a science based on measurement and logic. Antoine Lavoisier, who appeared on the scene at the end of the 18th century, is the person who turned chemistry into a true science. With his most famous experiment, Lavoisier brought a revolutionary law to chemistry, the law of conservation of mass. By burning a substance in a closed glass jar, he showed that the total mass at the beginning and end of the reaction did not change. This debunked a long-held false belief. Matter was not destroyed, it just changed form. Lavoisier also explained that combustion was actually the combination of substances with oxygen, disproving the old phlogiston theory. He classified substances as elements and compounds and laid the foundation foundations for the modern system of chemical nomenclature. Chemical reactions could now be expressed with mathematical equations, making chemistry a predictable and repeatable science. The next great leap for chemistry took place in a world invisible to the naked eye. At the beginning of the 19th century, John Dalton proposed the idea that all matter is made up of tiny, indivisible, and indestructible particles called atoms. Dalton's theory was based on a few fundamental principles. Every element is made of unique atoms. For example, an iron atom is completely different from an oxygen atom. All atoms of the same element are identical in mass and size. Atoms of different elements have different masses and sizes. Chemical compounds are formed by the combination of atoms of different elements in specific fixed ratios. Chemical reactions are just the rearrangement of atoms. Atoms are neither created nor destroyed. These principles formed the basis of chemistry and allowed us to understand chemical reactions as the dance of atoms. Dalton also provided a visual representation of chemical equations by showing atoms with simple symbols, making atomic theory a more understandable and widespread concept. Dalton's revolutionary ideas instantly turned chemistry into a structural science. In the mid-19th century, the number of known elements had increased, and a way to organize this information was needed. This is where 
Dmitry Mendeleev came onto the stage. Mendeleev created the periodic table by arranging the elements according to their atomic weights and chemical properties. Mendeleev's table was so ingeniously designed that it not only organized the known elements, but also accurately predicted the existence and properties of elements yet to be discovered. For example, he left gaps in his table for elements like Eka aluminum, later discovered as gallium, and Eka silicon, later discovered as germanium. These gaps were like a treasure map for chemists. The periodic table remains the most fundamental guide for chemists even today, showing that elements are not just a random collection, but part of a harmonious and ordered system. At the beginning of the 20th century, science discovered that the atom was a far more complex structure than we had thought. With J.J. Thompson's discovery of the electron, it was understood that atoms contained negatively charged particles. Then, Ernest Rutherford with his famous gold foil experiment showed that there was a small, dense, positively charged nucleus at the center of the atom. This discovery disproved the plum pudding model and revealed that the atom was mostly empty space. Niels Bohr later developed a model showing that electrons exist in specific energy levels or orbits around the nucleus. With this new knowledge, the formation of chemical bonds was better understood. Chemical formulas now showed not only the number of atoms, but also how they were connected to each other. Covalent bond. Two atoms come together by sharing their electrons. This bond forms the basis of molecules like water, methane, and carbon dioxide. Ionic bond. One atom gives an electron to another. This bond is seen in compounds like table salt. One atom becomes a positively charged ion, cation, while the other becomes a negatively charged ion, anion. Metallic bond occurs in metals where free electrons form an electron C among positive metal ions. This explains why metals are good conductors of electricity and heat. These bonds allowed us to better understand how molecules come together to form complex structures. The 20th century was the age of organic chemistry. The incredible flexibility of the carbon atom, the basic building block of life, was discovered. With its ability to form four bonds, carbon was a unique atom that could create chains, rings, and branch structures. This ability opened the door to countless compounds, from medicines to plastics, DNA to proteins. Organic chemistry developed its own language and structural rules. Organic chemistry brought breakthroughs in fields like medicine, engineering, and biology. Today, chemistry studies the probabilities and wave functions of electrons. This knowledge forms the basis of everything from nanotechnology to next generation drugs, from synthetic materials to quantum computers. Quantum chemistry gives us the power to predict how molecules will behave in a virtual environment and to design brand new materials. Chemistry is not just about test tubes and colorful liquids. It's a story of curiosity that has lasted for thousands of years. I worked really hard on this video and your subscription means a lot to me.